Baik, selamat siang Bapak Ibu sekalian. Terima kasih atas waktu dan kesempatannya dapat berkumpul bersama kembali di dalam event kita pada setiap hari Kamis siang. Dan kali ini dalam bulan Juli ini kita membahas mengenai Aptiknas in the Real World ya. Jadi Aptiknas in the Real World ini merupakan rangkaian seri kegiatan kita yang kita lakukan di tiap Kamis siang. Mengupdate Bapak Ibu sekalian dengan teknologi dan pendekatan yang terbaru terkait dengan teknologi informasi dan komunikasi. Dan khususnya pada siang kali ini kita akan membahas mengenai Internet of Things. Dan hadir bersama kita kali ini dari anggota Aptiknas ya. Jadi ada Wira Energi dan juga ada konteks Singapura ya. Jadi nanti sebagian materinya akan dipresentasikan dalam bahasa Inggris ya. Jadi mohon maaf. Bapak-Ibu sekalian, nanti materinya kita akan dengar dalam bahasa Inggris untuk yang sesi dari kontak. Oke, jadi sebelum masuk ke dalam ini, izinkan saya mengingatkan kembali beberapa hal terkait dengan virtual event rules kita. Jadi yang pertama, pastikan Bapak-Ibu menggunakan nama yang sesuai yang dengan terdaftar di eventsedas.com. Ini untuk memudahkan kami untuk membuat kehadiran dan juga E sertifikat yang nanti Bapak Ibu terima dalam uh, email yang nanti di blast oleh event cerdas. Kemudian uh, matikan atau mute mikrofon Anda selama uh, presentasi dilakukan. Kemudian untuk Bapak Ibu yang memiliki koneksi internet terbatas dapat mematikan video ya. Uh, dan berikutnya untuk semua pertanyaan ya semua pertanyaan nanti dapat diberikan ke saya selaku host. Ya, jadi memudahkan agar nanti mungkin kalau ada pertanyaan yang dalam bahasa Indonesia harus saya bantu translate ke bahasa Inggris agar partner kita ini mengerti. Kemudian pertanyaan ya pastikan diberikan ke saya ke host. Kemudian peserta mohon maaf untuk bapak ibu yang tidak tertib kami akan keluarkan dari meeting room kita pada siang kali ini. Oke, okay, berikutnya inilah adalah agenda kita. Jadi uh, tidak banyak uh, presenter pada siang kali ini. Jadi cukup uh, dua ya. Jadi saya melakukan opening. Kemudian setelah itu kita akan masuk ke so, presentasi solusi IoT Smart System Teknologi dari uh, Wira Energi yang dibawakan oleh Aldi Kurniawan. Kemudian berikutnya uh, jam 3 kita akan mendengarkan solusi presentasi dari Kontek ya, IoT Platform dan Solution Mr. Hari Yohanan. Jadi uh, dia akan menyampaikan uh, presentasi solusi dari Kontek. Setelah itu kita akan Q&A. Jadi pertanyaan Bapak Ibu dapat sampaikan melalui uh, apa chat box ya kepada saya. Kemudian nanti kita akan bahas di sesi Q&A ya. Setelah itu kita akan closing mudah-mudahan jam 16.30 kita sudah bisa closing. Jadi itu adalah agenda kita pada siang sampai dengan sore nanti ya. Mohon izin perkenalan lagi, jadi saya Fanki Christian. Saya adalah Ketua DPD DKI dari Asosiasi Pengusaha TK Nasional atau Aptiknas. Aptiknas ini ada banyak DPD-nya, kebetulan saya adalah Ketua DKI. Kemudian saya juga waktu Ketua dan Asosiasi Sistem Integrator dan Security Indonesia atau ASISINDO dan juga sekjen dari Asosiasi Cloud Computing Indonesia. Dua aktivitas bisnis saya yang terkait dengan IT yang pertama adalah PT Daya Cipta Mandiri Solusi ini sistem integrator company terkait dengan data center, cloud dan monitoring dan berikutnya adalah PT Kota Cerdas Indonesia yang mengelola platform yang Bapak Ibu gunakan untuk meeting kita pada siang kali ini yaitu eventcerdas.com ya. Berikutnya saya akan share sedikit tentang Aptiknas ya. Jadi untuk Bapak Ibu yang belum mengenal Aptiknas, Aptiknas ini dibentuk pada 24 Februari 2017. Ya, kemudian sebetulnya kami bukan asosiasi yang baru karena kami bergerak dari asosiasi lama yang dulu bernama Apomindo. Kemudian kami bertransformasi menjadi asosiasi yang baru yang bernama Aptiknas. Saat ini beranggotakan pengusaha di bidang teknologi informasi dan komunikasi atau ICT ya di Indonesia, dan saat ini kita memiliki 29 DPD seluruh Indonesia. Nah, profil anggota kami adalah principal, uh, distributor, uh, reseller, system integrator, software developer, dan konsultan. Ya, Jadi Bapak-Ibu yang terkait dengan bidang TIK, silakan mendaftar ke DPD Aptiknas di tempat terdekat dengan Bapak-Ibu sekalian. Oke, berikutnya tentang event cerdas ya. Jadi event cerdas ini adalah platform event management yang dikelola oleh PT Kota Cerdas Indonesia. 
dan kami merupakan anggota Tiknas sejak tahun 2019 ya dengan fokus bisnis di event platform dengan menggunakan nama eventcerdas.com. Bapak Ibu juga bisa melihat berita-berita terkait dengan teknologi informasi dan komunikasi di biscom.web.id serta untuk robot ya jadi kami juga ada layanan robot robot service ya terutama jadi ini di pusat robot.id dan Bapak Ibu yang tertarik dengan uh, isu Smart City bisa mengikuti berita dan geliat Smart City di smartcityindo.com. Oke, jadi saya akan masuk ke dalam topik uh, siang kali ini. Jadi kita bicara tentang Internet of Things dan hal yang menarik sebetulnya di dunia Internet of Things ini uh, secara jumlah uh, devicesnya ini meningkat terus ya dan diperkirakan di tahun ini sudah sampai 50 billion ya connected devices. Jadi luar biasa sekali jumlah internet apa jumlah devices yang akan terkoneksi ke apa internet ya dengan pendekatan internet of things. Dan berikutnya sebetulnya kalau kita bicara internet of things ya sebetulnya kita bicara di apa tentang data, tentang information, tentang knowledge dan wisdom. Karena Internet of Things akan bicara tentang sensor atau actuators, ya, kemudian itu dikumpulkan dalam bentuk data menjadi informasi dan informasi ini menjadi knowledge, kemudian menjadi wisdom. Jadi Bapak Ibu nanti akan melihat ada berapa perusahaan-perusahaan yang memang mereka memiliki kemampuan untuk mengambil data dari berbagai sensor, diolah menjadi informasi dan menjadi knowledge tentunya oleh beberapa perusahaan besar mereka gunakan sebagai wisdom untuk pengambilan keputusan, ya. Jadi Semakin banyak data menjadi informasi dan knowledge, dan muncullah wisdom. Jadi inilah peluang kita semua untuk bisa menjadi knowledge provider. Nah, menjadi knowledge provider ini sebetulnya banyak sekali halnya, dan pada siang kali ini kami membatasi hanya terkait dengan uh, industrial IoT ya dan uh, energy monitoring, karena sebetulnya kalau kita lihat ada yang terkait dengan smart city, nanti kita bisa buat sesi khusus tentang smart city, ada traffic, infrastructure, ya. jadi yang kali ini kita lebih banyak ke utilities dan uh, industrial ya jadi solusi-solusi itu yang paling banyak uh, mungkin Bapak Ibu akan lihat pada siang kali ini. Nah berikutnya uh, Indonesia itu udah seperti sampai di mana terkait dengan Internet of Things ya jadi kalau kita lihat ke negara tetangga seperti Malaysia mereka punya uh, strategi nasional ya Malaysia IoT apa namanya strategi kalau di kita kita belum punya dan kita memang akui industri yang kita bisa punya sekarang ini adalah lebih banyak ke industri yang terkait dengan layer 3, layer 2, layer 1 dan layer 0 ya. Jadi kalau sedangkan untuk di bawahnya ya layer 5, 6, 7 itu kebanyakan Indonesia belum memiliki resource-nya. Nah, jadi ini challenge buat kita semua bagaimana kita bisa memaksimalkan potensi kita agar bisa juga memiliki industri-industri dengan perangkat IoT di Indonesia. Nah, kemudian ada satu hal lagi yang juga harus jadi concern adalah uh, tentang privacy atau security issue ya. Jadi dari pertanyaan Bapak Ibu sekalian, kami melihat ada beberapa yang concern dengan IoT security ya, tapi kita tidak akan bahas itu di siang ini. Ya, tapi kita lihat bahwa 55% itu uh, salah satu trade terkait dengan uh, security uh, dan privacy itu datangnya dari IoT ya. Oke, okay, jadi itu adalah pengantar saya untuk uh, pada siang kali ini. Kita akan masuk ke sesi survei seperti biasa. Saya minta tolong Bapak Ibu sekalian mengakses menti.com ya. Saya siapkan dulu mengakses menti.com ke Sebentar. Oke, okay, menti.com 857290. Silakan Bapak Ibu sekalian mengakses ke menti.com. Ke menti.com masukkan kode 857290 ya. Saya ada dua pertanyaan saja mengawali sesi kita pada uh, siang kali ini. Menurut Anda pengguna IoT itu siapa? Silakan mengakses ke survei kita di menti.com masukkan kode 857290 ya. Bapak Ibu bisa memilih Menurut Anda pengguna IoT itu siapa saja ya? Jadi silakan saya tunggu sudah ada dua jawaban ya. Ada yang apakah itu perorangan? Apakah itu perusahaan umum? Jadi perusahaan pada umumnya ataukah mungkin agak spesifik perusahaan provider atau telco ya? Atau mungkin juga pemerintah. Jadi saya lihat siang ini ada beberapa yang dari pemerintahan ya atau malah tempat publik atau dalam hal ini misalnya mall ya. Nanti kita akan lihat solusi yang disampaikan oleh Wira terkait dengan tempat publik atau mall ya. Jadi 
Silakan menurut Bapak Ibu pengguna IoT itu siapa ya? Siapakah pengguna IoT itu ya? Jadi silakan apakah itu perorangan, home user, perusahaan pada umumnya, perusahaan provider atau telco, pemerintah atau tempat uh, publik atau mall ya. Jadi saya ingin lihat Uh, sudah 21 orang menjawab dari 55 orang yang ada berhadir pada siang kali ini. 24 orang menjawab kebanyakan perusahaan umum. Ya, jadi mungkin banyak perusahaan bisa mulai menggunakan, apalagi uh, sekarang ini ya kita masuk ke tempat-tempat tertentu saja sudah di apa suhu kita sudah langsung dicek ya. Dan itu bisa terintegrasi ya. Nah jadi menurut anda pengguna IoT itu siapa saja ya? Silakan sudah 50 persen lebih menjawab. Ada perorangan atau home user ya tanpa sadar kita banyak juga menggunakan IoT untuk uh, keperluan pribadi kita ya home user juga sudah mulai banyak uh, mengakses tentang uh, IoT ya smart home kemudian juga perusahaan atau mungkin perusahaan umum ya atau perusahaan provider ya yang tanda kutip sebetulnya mereka punya koneksi internetnya ya kemudian uh, pemerintah ya pemerintah juga sudah banyak yang berkonsentrasi kah terkait dengan IoT dan terakhir adalah tempat publik atau mall. 31 orang menjawab, sebagian besar masih menjawab perusahaan umum ya. Oke, kita lanjut ke pertanyaan berikutnya, pertanyaan nomor 2. Oke. Kita cek sama-sama ya, istilah IoT yang Anda ketahui. Jadi ini ada beberapa istilah. Istilah IoT yang Anda sudah ketahui. Silakan apakah itu eh uh, M2M machine Ya, ataukah itu sensor atau gateway? Apakah itu RFID atau NFC? Apakah itu home IoT, industrial IoT, atau ada istilahnya P2P ya, person to person IoT? Oke, silakan. Bagaimana? Sudah ada jawabannya. Istilah IoT yang telah anda ketahui, ya. Jadi mungkin ada yang belum ketahui, bapak ibu silakan pilih istilah-istilah IoT mana saja yang kira-kira bapak ibu sudah tahu terkait dengan istilah IoT, ya. Silakan. Sensor gateway menempati peringkat pertama. Paling banyak orang tahu tentang IoT terkait dengan sensor dan gateway. Berikutnya tentang RFID atau NFC, ya. Industrial IoT juga sudah mulai banyak ini Industrial IoT ya. Jadi ini 29 orang, 30 orang telah menjawab ya. Kebanyakan masih mengenal tentang istilah IoT itu sensor dan gateway. Ini bagus ya karena nanti para presenter kita akan jauh lebih mudah menjelaskan ya karena terkait dengan sensor dan uh, gateway ya. Home IoT, oke, okay. home IoT atau smart home ya juga sudah mulai banyak kita gunakan dalam aktivitas kita. Silakan. Bapak Ibu menjawab, 33 orang menjawab ya. Oke, 33 orang menjawab sebagian besar istilah IoT yang telah diketahui adalah terkait dengan sensor atau gateway. Berikutnya adalah industrial IoT ya. It's good point ya. Jadi industrial IoT sudah mulai banyak diketahui oleh publik. Jadi kegiatan-kegiatan seperti ini memang digunakan untuk mempublikasikan, memberikan awareness ya terkait dengan IoT ya, kemudian RFID atau NFC ya, jadi RFID dan NFC ini juga udah jadi hal yang umum dalam aktivitas harian kita, di handphone kita malah ada yang ada ready NFC ya, kemudian mesin to mesin ya, jadi kita sudah lihat juga uh, dalam beberapa tahun ini banyak uh, terkait dengan mesin to mesin ya, oke, okay. jadi itu adalah uh, Jawaban-jawaban dari Bapak Ibu sekalian terkait dengan survei awal kita sebelum kita memulai acara kita. 14.29 kita akan masuki dalam sesi pertama kita. ya. Jadi Bapak Ibu, eh, kita akan masuk ke sesi pertama kita yang nanti akan disampaikan oleh Pak Aldi Kurniawan. Pak Aldi Kurniawan, apakah monitor? Ya, Pak Fanti. Ya, terima. Ya, oke. Okay. Silakan di-share screen-nya, Pak. Ya, sudah Pak. Oke Pak Fanki, terima kasih Pak. Perkenalkan, saya Aldi Kurniawan. Jadi saya di sini Kepala Divisi di bagian IoT dari PT Wira Energi. Mungkin di sini saya coba langsung masuk presentasi kami Pak. Di share Pak. Oke, sudah bisa terlihat Pak? Ya, oke. Okay. 
ditampilkan full screen. Ya, sudah full screen ya Pak ya? Sudah terlihat? Belum Pak, belum Pak. Oke, okay, udah. Ya. Oke, okay, Pak Fangki, saya mulai dari presentasinya. Jadi kami di sini dari PT Wira Energi, di sini kami mau berbicara mengenai IoT Smart System Teknologi, terutama di bagian untuk Smart Utility System, Pak. Oke, okay, jadi sedikit cerita tentang background Wira Energi. Jadi Wira Energi sendiri ini merupakan private utility company di mana kami Wira Energi ini mensuplai air, gas dan listrik ke private sektor maupun ada commercial buildings dan resident area. Dan di mana di pada saat kami melakukan penjualan air ataupun gas ataupun listrik itu kami di sini menemukan pain atau problem dari sisi kami sendiri yaitu pain yang paling sering terjadi adalah di mana kami itu harus melakukan manual bisnis proses di mana kita berjualan otomatis kita harus menagih ya pada saat penagihan itu kita harus rely on engineering di mana kita harus membutuhkan suatu tim engineering untuk melakukan pencatatan meter bersama dengan customer dan di situ kami berpikir bagaimana caranya kita mempunyai solusi supaya kita bisa memiliki banyak customer tapi kita tidak perlu rely on engineering gitu loh. Makanya baru dibentuklah suatu divisi IoT dan kita mencoba untuk mengembangkan solusi IoT gimana caranya untuk mensolve problem-problem kita tersebut. Nah, selain itu dengan adanya IoT ini kita juga bisa mengetahui selain bisnis proses kita yang bisa kita buat menjadi digital kita juga bisa mengkontrol usage dan maupun dari billing dari utility tadi tersebut. Karena dengan ada IoT ini semua transformasi menjadi digital dan semua menjadi otomatis. Dan kemudian juga dengan ada IoT ini akan mengurangi customer komplain. Karena biasanya kalau yang terjadi adalah kita menjual air atau gas atau listrik, kita harus melakukan pencatatan meter di akhir bulan yang tiba-tiba biasanya customer itu kan komplain tiba-tiba kok saya di akhir bulan ini tiba-tiba pemakaian saya sekian gitu karena mereka sebenarnya dia tidak menyadari seberapa pemakaian mereka tiap hari nah oleh karena itu sebenarnya yang perlu di bold juga adalah mengenai data integritas nah kita juga belakangan ini sering mendengar ada kasus di mana PLN banyak customer komplain mengenai tagihan PLN selama kita lockdown ini karena sebenarnya yang terjadi adalah PLN ini tidak bisa men-share data integritas kepada customer atau pelanggan semuanya. Padahal bisa jadi kita memang karena lockdown kita di rumah, jadi pemakaian kita melonjak gitu. Cuman PLN itu tidak bisa mempertanggungjawabkan. Nah, sebenarnya dengan adanya IoT ini kita bisa memberikan suatu data kepada customer yang akhirnya bisa mengurangi komplain dari customer tersebut. Nah, dengan adanya implementasi IoT di Wira Energi ini, ini juga merupakan salah satu tujuan utamanya adalah mencapai customer satisfaction atau kepuasan dari pelanggan. Oke, mungkin saya lanjut ke bagian IoT teknologi. Di sini IoT teknologi kita mungkin cukup banyak, ada beberapa IoT teknologi, yaitu contohnya ada teknologi mungkin LAN atau LP1 atau seluler. Nah, di mana kami di utility, menurut kami, Uh, teknologi IoT yang paling cocok adalah menggunakan LT1 atau LoRaWAN karena LoRaWAN di sini uh, merupakan teknologi di mana dia long range, baterainya pun cukup uh, pemakaian konsumsinya sangat kecil dan low cost, walaupun memang dia tidak baik untuk high data rate uh, karena memang secara utility atau data yang kita butuhkan di utility itu sangat kecil, jadi mengapa LP1 khususnya LoRa itu kami pilih di mana lorawan ini juga menggunakan star topologi, di mana semua nodes akan terhubung ke dalam satu gateway. Oke, okay, next. Uh, secara Kominfo juga uh, teknologi lorawan ini sudah disahkan oleh Kominfo pada tahun lalu, itu pertengahan tahun 2019, di mana akhirnya di Indonesia ini menggunakan frekuensi 920 sampai 923 MHz. Mungkin sebelumnya dari dua tahun yang lalu, teknologi IoT juga sudah cukup terdengar di Indonesia.
Sorry, ini sharing screen-nya terpotong ya, Pak? Bentar. Oke Pak, coba lagi Pak. Oke, saya lanjutkan. Sudah terlihat Pak, Pak Sudah, sudah. Oke, saya lanjutkan mengenai lorawan tadi. Jadi di Indonesia ini sudah ditentukan oleh Kominfo di mana kita mendapatkan uh, 3 MHz band, yaitu 920-923 sehingga sekarang nih untuk penggunaan teknologi lorawan ini sudah disahkan. Jadi kita bebas melakukan atau menggunakan teknologi lorawan ini dan teknologi yang disahkan adalah unlicensed atau tidak berbayar. Seperti contohnya kalau dulu ada bold atau frekuensi yang ada license sedangkan kalau lorawan ini unlicensed atau tidak berbayar. Nah, eh, tadi juga mungkin saya sudah sempat singgung, yaitu ada kelebihan dari teknologi lorawan sendiri, yaitu yaitu dia long range. Jadi jarak yang dapat di cover oleh satu gateway atau satu BTS di dalam eh, city area itu sekitar 1-5 km. Nah, kita ada beberapa eh, experience, di mana di Jakarta ini kita ada coba rata-rata eh, kita bisa mencapai di dalam daerah Jakarta itu bisa mencapai 3 km, Pak. Karena uh, ini radio frekuensi itu sangat berpengaruh terhadap adanya halangan seperti dinding atau tembok atau pohon gitu. Walaupun memang secara teknologi long range ini lorawan cukup baik karena dia bisa menembus dinding atau tembok. Namun di Jakarta kita based on experience kami itu bisa mencapai 3 kilo. Sedangkan uh, untuk di open space area itu bisa mencapai 15 km. Kemudian juga teknologi ini dia membutuhkan power yang sangat kecil sehingga dengan kita menggunakan baterai di sensor kita itu bisa mencapai 5 kilo eh sorry bisa mencapai 5 tahun. Uh, Funky, sorry ini si bentar, bentar bentar Ini yang nono right ini selalu ganggu ini. Bentar. Coba, Pak. Iya. Sudah bisa dilihat, Pak? Iya, ya. Iya. Ya. Oke, saya lanjutkan. Kemudian adalah uh, interoperability, yaitu maksudnya adalah di mana sensor-sensor yang terkonek ke dalam satu device, ke dalam satu gateway, itu bisa sangat banyak dan beragam. Jadi satu gateway itu tidak hanya bisa terkonek ke dalam satu sensor saja atau ke satu jenis sensor, tetapi satu gateway itu bisa terkonek ke dalam bermacam-macam sensor. Dan kemudian yang menarik adalah dia low cost, di mana satu gateway itu secara teoritis memang dia bisa mengcover sampai lebih dari 5.000 nodes. Oke, okay, next saya akan sedikit berbicara tentang infrastruktur dari lorawan, yaitu di sini dibagi menjadi empat bagian, yaitu pertama adalah ada n nodes. Enos ini adalah sisi dari sensor yang bisa bermacam-macam di Indonesia ini. Mungkin kita ada tadi smart meter, ada pet tracking, atau smoke alarm, ada trash container, dan bisa sangat bermacam dan sudah sangat banyak sekali untuk sensor lorawan sendiri. Dari Enos ini, lalu dia akan mengirimkan data menggunakan teknologi lorawan ini, dikirimkan ke gateway. Nah, gateway ini adalah merupakan, kalau kita anggap adalah gateway ini seperti BTS dan Enos itu adalah handphone-nya. Jadi, tadi yang kita sebut jaraknya itu bisa mencapai 1-5 kilo, itu adalah range dari gateway ke Enos. Lalu dari gateway, di dalam gateway tersebut juga ada SIM card atau di dalam gateway itu membutuhkan internet sehingga data-data yang tadi didapat dari Enos bisa langsung dikirimkan ke dalam network server dan disajikan di dalam aplikasi server. Nah, untuk uh, secara teknologi lorawan sendiri, ini juga sudah encrypted datanya, sehingga dari sisi keamanannya pun juga sudah cukup terjamin, sehingga datanya tidak bisa mungkin di tengah-tengah kita ambil uh, untuk mengambil data atau dicolong datanya dihack di tengah-tengah. gitu. Jadi cukup baik dari sisi security untuk teknologi lorawan sendiri. 
Nah kami dari Wira Energi, di mana kami tadi itu membutuhkan solusi ini sebenarnya untuk internal, sehingga kami di sini memprovide end-to-end -end solution dari device, gateway, network, dan aplikasi. Oke, okay, next ini merupakan adalah beberapa produk yang sudah kami kembangkan, terutama kita masih sekarang fokus di dalam utility meter. Jadi kita punya produk, ada gas meter yang mungkin bisa dilihat warnanya biru, kita punya ada dari kapasitas G2,5 sampai G16, dan kelebihan dari gas meter ini selain kita dapat membaca datanya menggunakan teknologi lorawan tadi, di dalamnya juga kita masukkan semacam valve sehingga apabila ada terjadi kebakaran ataupun ada kebutuhan yang mendesak kita dapat langsung menutup aliran gas tersebut dengan hanya menekan satu tombol di dalam aplikasi sistem kami. Selain itu kita juga punya produk water meter yang di tengah itu dari ukuran setengah in sampai dengan satu in dan juga kita ada produk untuk KWH meter dari satu fast dan tiga fast. Nah, semua produk utility meter kami ini sudah diembeditkan teknologi lorawan ya. Jadi kita tidak perlu ada menambah suatu modul, kita hanya pasang seperti layaknya meter biasa, lalu dari meter tersebut sudah sudah terimplementasi uh, teknologi lorawan. Lalu yang di bawah kita juga ada punya ada RS485 Lora Bridge. Di sini adalah sebenarnya sangat menarik karena kita bisa menarik semua data-data dari sensor yang sudah ada existing, yang sudah menggunakan Modbus, Modbus protokol. Jadi misalkan kita punya existing device yang tadinya sudah bermodbus, namun dengan Modbus itu kan kita harus menarik kabel. Nah kita bisa merubah dari kabel itu kita transformasikan menjadi dengan teknologi LoRa. Lalu di sebelahnya ada Cyber non max Sensor, ini khusus untuk uh, meter air dan meter gas, kebanyakan merek Aitron yang sudah memiliki pulse output, kita juga bisa menangkap pulse tersebut dan merubah menjadi ke data digital dan dikirimkan dengan menggunakan LoRa. Kemudian kita juga punya produk, ada pressure sensor, di sini lebih ke arah untuk industri, gas industri sih Pak, jadi di sini speknya cukup tinggi dari 0 sampai 200 number. Dan juga yang cukup menarik ada temperatur sensor, di sini adalah ambient temperatur sensor itu fungsi adalah kita untuk mengetahui temperatur dan humidity di suatu area tertentu. Nah, dari semua sensor-sensor di sebelah kiri ini, seperti dari infrastruktur yang sudah saya jelaskan, akan berkomunikasi ke gateway dengan menggunakan norawan. Nah, dari gateway sendiri, kita juga ada memiliki dua, dua tipe, yaitu untuk outdoor dan indoor. Dari gateway, lalu data akan dikirimkan ke network server dan aplikasi server. Nah, secara uh, kita menggunakan utility meter itu untuk custody, di mana biasanya alat meter itu kan kita gunakan untuk sebagai penagihan. Jadi, uh, di Indonesia itu wajib memiliki sertifikat meteorologi yang dikeluarkan oleh Dirjen Perlindungan Konsumen. Nah, semua meter kami juga kami sudah memiliki sertifikat uji tipe tersebut, sehingga meter kami ini dapat dikalibrasi di meteorologi manapun. Next ini merupakan untuk gateway, jadi kami di sini memiliki dua produk gateway dan kebetulan kami juga di sini menjadi distributor dari curling. Mungkin curling ini juga cukup advance di bagian LoRa karena memang mereka salah satu pelopor pembuat gateway yang cukup paling baik sih bisa kita bilang. Jadi yang sebelah kiri, WireNet iStation merupakan outdoor gateway, dan yang sebelah kanan adalah FM Tosel, itu peruntukannya adalah indoor gateway. Perbedaannya adalah dari sisi tadi, dari IP rating, dan sebenarnya uh, dari jarak coverage-nya antara yang indoor dan outdoor. Oke, okay, next. Nah, uh, karena in, uh, gateway itu akan memancarkan dan menerima teknologi lorawan, maka gateway ini juga perlu yang namanya ada sertifikat dari Kominfo. Dan dari produk tersebut, kami juga sudah memiliki sertifikat dari Kominfo, di mana semua peraturan Kominfo yang ada di dikeluarkan oleh Kominfo sudah, terikut, sudah kami ikuti, dan produk kami sudah lolos dari sertifikasi ini. Oke, okay, next. Selain tadi kita sudah berbicara tentang hardware, kita juga untuk membuat sistem IoT itu bisa berjalan dengan baik, kita memerlukan suatu uh, infrastruktur sistem. 
Jadi uh, seperti tadi kita ketahui, dari gateway itu akan mengirimkan ke dalam network server dan ke aplikasi server. Nah, ini merupakan infrastruktur yang kami buat, di mana kami membuat yang namanya adalah suatu core yang kami beri nama WE IoT Solution, di mana WE IoT Solution ini dapat connect ke dalam network server mana saja. Jadi, uh, ini kita bisa lihat salah satunya ada Evrinet atau Antares, merupakan uh, network server yang uh, dibuat oleh Telkom, lalu ada juga network server dari Kerling, dan kami juga memiliki Vira Energi Network Server, dan mungkin juga banyak uh, yang sering kita pakai ada open source, yaitu TTN. Nah, kami membuat core ini adalah dengan tujuan, karena kami merasa uh, tidak mungkin uh, IoT ini hanya menggunakan salah satu network server aja dan apabila ada terjadi kita down, kita harus bisa switch sehingga sistem kita menjadi robust. Makanya kita buat yang namanya ada WE IoTS untuk mengcover semua kejadian tersebut. Lalu dari WE IoTS ini, lalu kita kirimkan data ke corporate app system, yang di mana corporate app system itu di bawahnya ada billing system, ada mobile apps, ada web apps, yaitu di mana kita bisa melihat dashboard, lalu semua fitur-fitur ada di dalam sini. Nah ini merupakan salah satu contoh dari uh, web apps kami, dashboardnya. Jadi dari web apps tersebut, uh, kita bisa melihat uh, status dari nodes tersebut, apakah dia aktif atau tidak aktif, lalu status dari gateway, lalu ada alert juga yang bisa kita lihat, misalkan ada anomali itu kita bisa langsung cek dari sistem alert tersebut, dan kita juga bisa membuat grafik ini ada grafik dari pemakaian air, gas, ataupun listrik. Oke, nah ini salah satu contoh dari uh, web apps kami juga. Di sini kita bisa, dengan ada IoT, kita bisa merecord pemakaian dari air, ataupun gas, atau listrik setiap baik tiap jam, ataupun tiap menit. Jadi, untuk teknologi LoRa ini juga kita bisa men-set interval yang dibutuhkan oleh operator atau user. Jadi, kita bisa set dari 15 menit sekali, atau satu pun satu hari sekali. Nah, next, selain itu juga kita bisa dari dengan adanya kita memiliki data, lalu kita bisa memiliki invoice otomatis, di mana kita tidak perlu lagi menginput yang biasanya kita harus input satu persatu data pelanggan, lalu kita bisa langsung otomatis uh, billing tersebut langsung tercreate dan billing ini langsung tersend by email ke dalam customer, sehingga ini sangat memudahkan kami dari bisnis prosesnya ini uh, semua menjadi otomatis. Uh, next, nah kami juga sudah membuat mobile apps, di mana mobile apps ini biasanya kita peruntukkan untuk customer, karena kita di sini uh, ingin mengadakan transparansi antara operator dan customer, sehingga customer pun juga bisa melihat pemakaiannya, lalu billing, ataupun transaksi semua bisa dilihat di mobile apps yang kami sediakan. Nah, ini juga ada salah satu ada beberapa diagram, ada customer kami yaitu PGN Group dan Pertamina Group di mana kita mengimplementasi IoT untuk melihat gas leakage detection. Jadi dengan dengan kita membuat perbagian yaitu kita membutuhkan suatu flow meter dan pressure sensor, kita bisa mengetahui apabila di tengah pipa tersebut ada kebocoran. Karena harusnya kalau misalkan kita lihat dari ada gas meter yang monitoring satu dan gas meter dua, harusnya kalau memang tidak ada kebocoran, flow-nya harus sama dan pressure-nya pun harus sama. Nah, dengan adanya IoT ini, kita bisa melihat pada suatu jam tertentu, lalu kita bisa mengecek apabila ada perubahan, kita bisa mendapatkan alert bahwa di titik tersebut ada kebocoran. Nah, selain dari sisi gas, dari sisi air juga kita melakukan sistem yang sama, Uh, namun bedanya tadi hanya untuk melihat gas kalau di sini dari sisi air. Nah kami juga melakukan gas monitoring solution kebanyakan di industri ataupun di komersial area juga. Nah kita juga bisa memonitor gas yang existing tadi dengan menggunakan contohnya yang di atas itu menggunakan RTU Tulora yang tadi jadi dari EVC dari gas monitoring kita bisa kirim datanya menggunakan RTU dan dikirimkan menggunakan Lora ataupun yang di bawah itu dari gas kita punya alat yang kita hanya attach device-nya lalu kita bisa memonitor untuk pemakaian mereka. Nah, ini ada beberapa contoh klien yang memang sudah menggunakan teknologi IoT kita, salah satunya di setiap di building 
Nah, ini merupakan uh, klien pertama kami dan sekarang sudah berjalan mungkin sekitar dua tahun dan sebenarnya mereka itu memiliki problem yang sama dengan kami yaitu mereka harus memiliki engineering untuk manual reading dan mereka juga banyak mendapat komplain dari customer karena tiba-tiba ada pemakaian gas yang melonjak lalu mereka uh, meminta kita untuk memberikan solusi menggunakan smart gas meter sehingga sekarang ada transparansi antara si building management dengan tenant sehingga mereka sekarang uh, customer komplain pun berkurang lalu ada juga di Lipo Mall Puri di Pomol Puri mereka juga memiliki problem yaitu uh, memiliki high electricity cost karena di mana sebelumnya mereka sering ribut dengan PLN karena mereka uh, merasa pemakaian mereka itu PLN yang yang menagihkan ke Lipo Mall Puri ini tidak sebesar itu jadi akhirnya di Lipo Mall Puri ini mereka menggunakan RTU kami jadi setelah incoming PLN mereka menggunakan meteran meteran tersebut lalu kita ambil data yang menggunakan lorak awan sehingga mereka punya data yang mereka bisa counter ke PLN bahwa pemakaian mereka adalah sekian selain itu juga di sana ada solusi untuk uh, temperatur sensor di mana sebelumnya banyak sekali customer atau teman yang komplain mengenai di sana ada uh, temperatur atau misalkan mereka merasa di sana cukup panas atau mereka merasa cukup dingin nah karena dengan adanya uh, temperatur sensor ini sehingga mereka bisa memiliki data dan mereka bisa memberikan keterangan bahwa ternyata di sini kita bisa set dengan lebih baik gitu untuk temperatur di sana. Kemudian ada klien kami salah satunya juga penuh indah group itu sama seperti Jawa Budi problem yang sama dan yang cukup menarik ini di kawasan Jawa BK Residence di mana sebelumnya mereka itu kan suatu kawasan Jawa BK yang cukup besar mereka itu membutuhkan operasional cost yang cukup tinggi untuk mengkolek semua data data-data pemakaian air sehingga mereka itu membutuhkan waktu sekitar 18 hari hanya untuk mengkolek pemakaian data meter dari eh, kawasan industri tersebut nah sehingga yang terjadi adalah mereka baru bisa menagih untuk air ke customer mereka itu tagihan di dua bulan sebelumnya sehingga dengan adanya solusi IoT ini mereka bisa mendapatkan data real time pada saat itu juga sehingga mereka bisa menagih sekarang pada tepat pada saat di cut off di tanggal cut off mereka langsung memiliki semua datanya dan mereka bisa langsung otomatis mengirimkan pada customer. Lalu kita juga ada klien di Lipo Mall Cikarang dan Bakso Afung. Di sini kebetulan di Lipo Mall Cikarang di sana kita mensuplai untuk gasnya. sehingga sebelum kita menggunakan teknologi IoT ini, kita kan tidak tahu bagaimana apakah gas tersebut sudah habis atau belum. Jadi sebelum adanya teknologi ini, kita harus setiap hari datang ke sana untuk mengecek apakah gas di sana itu sudah habis ataupun kita harus menunggu dengan telepon kalau di sana gasnya sudah habis. Tapi dengan adanya teknologi IoT ini, kita bisa mengecek pressure-nya otomatis langsung. Jadi kita tahu sisa di sana itu berapa, sehingga kita bisa mengefisiensikan driver kita, tidak perlu datang tiap hari, dan pada saat sudah mau habis, kita baru kirim gasnya ke sana. Nah, ini juga ada beberapa klien kami yang sudah menggunakan teknologi IoT. Oke, dan nah, ini juga mungkin cukup menarik yang mungkin baru saja terjadi, yaitu uh, di situasi seperti COVID ini kita banyak sekali melihat seperti Palija maupun PLN ataupun PGN, itu sekarang mereka memiliki pain atau problem karena mereka tidak bisa menagih atau mengirim orang untuk mendapatkan data pemakaian dan yang terjadi adalah mereka meminta dari kita penduduk untuk mengirimkan data pemakaian melalui WhatsApp yang sedangkan sebenarnya itu jarang dilakukan oleh kita penduduk nah yang terjadi adalah mereka ini palija ataupun PLN atau PGN yaitu kita hanya bisa mereka merata-rata pemakaian satu bulan terakhir dan mereka hanya menembak data tersebut Nah, yang sebenarnya kita lihat dengan adanya teknologi IoT ini, sebenarnya kita sudah bisa mencegah uh, problem ini. Nah, terakhir, di sini kami, Wira Energi, sebenarnya sangat percaya di opportunity di IoT, karena IoT ini sekarang sangat luas sekali. Jadi, mungkin kami sekarang masih fokus di utility untuk smart metering, namun sebenarnya pengembangan IoT ini sangat besar, seperti di transport dan logistik, mungkin ada fleet management, lalu bisa kita asset tracking, 
lalu di smart city itu bisa seperti parking sensor atau waste management smart building terutama juga consumer industri dan agriculture itu kita percaya sekali IoT ini akan growth dan semakin besar dan kita dari Wien Energi juga akan mengembangkan device device untuk ke arah ini semua jadi sekian presentasi dari kami saya mengucapkan terima kasih mungkin saya kembalikan ke Pak Pangki Oke, okay, baik. Terima kasih Pak Aldi Kurniawan dari Wira Energi ya. Jadi Bapak Ibu sangat menarik sekali bagaimana teknologi Internet of Things digunakan untuk memonitor utilities ya. Dalam hal ini pengalaman dari Wira Energi sangat berharga untuk dibagikan pada siang kali ini ya. Terima kasih Pak Aldi. Jadi kita akan masuk ke sesi selanjutnya. Tolong Bapak Ibu sekalian yang ada pertanyaan dapat sampaikan kepada saya selaku host. Nanti kita akan kumpulkan semua pertanyaannya ke para presenter kita ya. Pak Aldi nanti saya japri apa namanya saya kasih pertanyaan-pertanyaan yang sudah masuk ke saya. Oke, okay, the next session uh, Pak Mr. Hari, Mr. Hari Yohanan. Hello Hari. Hi, hi everyone. Ya, yeah, Hari. Okay, it's your turn. Please share the screen first. Sure. Okay. Uh, Bapak Ibu untuk sesinya Mr. Dari Yohanan uh, akan disampaikan dalam bahasa Inggris. Nanti kalau ada pertanyaan silakan sampaikan ke saya. Saya akan bantu translate ke bahasa Inggris ya. Okay, Harry, go ahead. The screen is yours. Can you see the screen? Contact IoT platform. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Can you hear me well? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, my name is Harry. I'm yes, from. Yes, good. Yeah. I'm from uh, ACA Pacific uh, Singapore. ACA Pacific Technology Singapore. We have a uh, office in uh, Indonesia as well. I will uh, put the uh, last two slides as an overview of the company, but uh, um, I want to give you the best part first. Okay. <laughs> on uh, context IoT uh, platform and uh, solutions. If I'm uh, talking too fast, uh, please message to uh, uh, Pak Fengki uh, so that I will slow down, all right? You can use the uh, message uh, by at the site. Okay, uh, before I go into the solutions, it's a, a quick overview about uh, Contact. Contact is a Japanese company. It was uh, established in 1975. That means more than 40 years ago. The actual fact, it existed as a, uh, it existed more than 40 years ago. It was originally 83 years ago, it was a division of Daifuku, uh, its parent company, all right? So what happened was uh, about 40 plus years ago, it was spun off as a subsidiary. And uh, sales itself uh, in 2019, it hit about 280 million US dollars, which is a 30% growth, and a staff uh, of about 600 people. Whereas its uh, parent country, uh, Daifuku, is the largest material handling uh, manu uh, manufacturer and solution provider in the world uh, from more than 80 plus years ago. Revenues of about 4.6 billion US dollars uh, last year. Uh, sorry, uh, it should be... Uh, um, 2019. Uh, I didn't. I didn't get it corrected. And employees of uh, 9,200. Uh, okay. So um, Singapore office. Uh, it supports ASEAN. Contact Singapore office supports ASEAN. It also supports. Uh, you know, not only ASEAN but also Hong Kong, India, and Oceania for sales and support. Uh, um, Japan, Taiwan, China, and US, while they support on sales and uh, after sales support, they also have their R&D and manufacturing in, in all these other locations. So Contact is very strong in uh, its R&D uh, uh, capability. In Singapore, Daifuku has about 80 over staff. Half of them are support and after sales support uh, staff. And uh, Contact has six people. However, Contact also... Uh, relies on Daifuku for its uh, support in this uh, region. 
Okay, this, uh, the next two slides, very important. Uh, uh, if I give uh, too much information in uh, one hour, please forgive me. But um, if you can remember this slide and the next slide, I achieved my target. Okay, there's two things you need to remember about uh, contact. Uh, first thing, it has a complete range of IoT solution. Data acquisition product like sensors, actuators, motion controllers. Industrial PC, it is very, very strong in industrial PC. In fact, 83 years ago, when it started off as, as a division of Daifuku, it started on a computing device. Its technology is so strong that um, all its uh, you know, industrial PCs are fanless. And in, because it has a Taiwan manufacturing, its uh, pricing is also very competitive. And in terms of uh, its performance, compared with all the Taiwanese brands. If you, if in the spec sheet it shows um, 70 degrees Celsius operating temperature, you get full performance up to 70 degrees. Not like uh, some of the Taiwanese brands, 60 degrees, they start to hang and you have buffering issue. They have digital analog IOs. Uh, they have devices to assist in uh, measurement and control function. Uh, network solutions like LoRa Wireless, uh, NB-IoT, LTEM, industrial Wi-Fi, sub-gigahertz uh, wireless. Um, and uh, give me a second. Sub-gigahertz wireless. It has APIs to support different um, uh, uh, and to, to integrate different platform. As a patented predictive preventive maintenance system with AI and data analytics for three-phase moto. The application for three-phase moto is uh, quite wide. It can be machines in the factory, it could be pumps in the affluent, influent uh, water pumping si system, it could be in uh, oil and gas and so on. So lift escalators, machines and so on. So basically we have very good condition monitoring system and with the condition monitoring system we can also do predictive preventive maintenance. Some of the systems we can just tap from the voltage transformer or from the current transformer and we can also see uh, what the motor is driving. Like for example, misalignment of your, uh, for example, your timing belt uh, or, you know, ball bearing is wearing out and so on. We are very strong in video analytics. Um, we don't do facial recognition, but video analytics for uh, operations like in factory, uh, people movement, and uh, video analytics is so good that, you know, even sushi making, uh, sushi making is very intricate. A lot of, uh, you know, in sushi making, there are rules, uh, very, and you have to follow the rules right to the dotting of the I and uh, crossing of the T. So with the, with the video analytics is so strong, even in the sushi making, all the intricate movement, uh, you can see whether the person is doing correctly or wrongly. Unmanned autonomous vehicle system, uh, they are very, very strong in this. Uh, in US, the Amazon warehouse have about 3,000 of their unmanned autonomous vehicle system running around the factory. They also have unmanned autonomous drone system with automatic charging. So you can set the path, let the autonomous uh, uh, drone uh, go and do fertilizing or go and do a certain operation. Then when the battery is low, it will come back to its docking station, uh, charge and go off on the path again. And then we have the controllers, which is called the Comprosis. Comprosis is short form for contact professional system. All right. So come to my next point, which is also very important. Now I want to stress this. Huh? We are the only brand in the market in terms of a hardware, in terms of a hardware that offers an open platform through its controllers, the Comprosis. It means you're able to integrate different brands of data acquisition products, sensors, actuators, motors, and so on. Able to integrate different brands of PLCs, CADA system. Able to support different in industry protocol, EtherCAT, Modbus, all the different field buses, BACnet, TCP IP, SMS. There are 300 over industry protocol, all right? To visualize, manage, and control systems from one integrated platform. Okay, so uh, there's a big difference between other people's open architecture system and what we, how we differentiate ourselves with context open platform system. Okay, in uh, open architecture system, in open architecture system, 
in order to convert the protocols and to allow different data acquisition products, PLCs, SCADA, BMS system, and all that to be integrated on the one platform, you need to do a lot of customization. Uh, scripting, coding with all the APIs and the SDK provided. This is too resource intensive, takes too long, requires beta testing for bug fixing, and it's uh, very expensive, right? Now, context comprises and its open platform does immediate acceptance and conversion of up to 300 plus protocols. It allows you to do immediate integration of different brands of data acquisition products, different systems onto one platform to visualize, control, and manage from a single platform. Now, this is very important. Okay, why is this very important? Because Firstly, I think all of you agree that IoT is nothing new. Okay, it is, it is really nothing new. It is about OT trying to bridge into IT. Okay, it is about automation and control trying to come into TCP IP. But that's where the problem is, isn't it? In IT, your main communication protocol is TCP IP. But in automation and control and OT, there's so many protocols that that's where the problem is. You know, uh, in there's the different types of sensors, uh, you know, uh, there are different brands of PLC, SCADA system. They don't communicate with each other. But you must agree that with me that in order to call the system IoT enabled, the first thing you have to do is to be able to pull everything onto one platform, to be able to control and manage from one platform. You want to apply AI? You want to apply data analytics? Now, without pulling everything onto one platform is impossible. You know, about uh, six months ago, uh, there was an event in uh, Singapore Expo. So all, uh, any, if, if you have come down to Singapore for some exhibition in Singapore Expo, you understand how uh, huge it is. It was an industry 4.0 uh, event. And then after the event, the ministers came out, you know, and they said, uh, you know, industry 4.0 is moving too slow. And then I look at it and I said, of course, it's moving too slow. Okay, why do I say that? Because uh, in Singapore, there's this government agency called ASTAR, right? Under ASTAR, there is two organizations, Simtech and uh, ARTC. They are supposed to help the manufacturing company to try to achieve 4.0. If you have a chance to come to Singapore and go to ARTC's or Simtech's office, you'll be very impressed. Got huge ABB machine, you know, robot arms, you have a production line uh, to show, uh, you know, manufacturers how to use IoT. And then you have very huge visualization, visualization and, and you see 3D machines, 3D printing machines. But when you talk to the manufacturer, they say, hey, look, we, from industry 3.0, I can, can hardly crawl to industry 4.0. The government want me to try to fly to industry 4.0. Have you looked at all my machines? You know, I spend... I spend millions of dollars, multi-million dollars on my machines. You know, the way they are presenting themselves is like as if everything goes into TCP IP. It doesn't. It doesn't go into TCP IP. So I need all my, I need to be able to collect all the information from my uh, various systems. And all of them have different protocols. And you can't call them legacy system. You can never call them legacy systems. Why? Yeah? Because in the next five years to 10 years, all the machines and all the uh, industry, whether in oil and gas and all that, they will still come with the same type of machine with all those different protocols, all right? Now, let's look at a building. Let's look at the building. You want to integrate a monitoring system. Um, you know, now facility management, security management, uh, and all that now is combining. Now, the, the line between facility management, security management, it's getting more blur. So those who are in security now want to go into facility management. And in facility management, in order to have economies of scale, one facility manager wants to be able to support uh, or, or provide uh, services for 10 buildings, 20 buildings, 50 buildings. But they don't want one person to monitor one building. No? They want one person to be able to monitor 10 buildings, 20 buildings, 30 buildings. How are you going to do that? So it's very interesting when you go into, uh, when you go to uh, exhibition and you see all those IoT solutions, you ask them, hey, so what do you have for your IoT solution? There's 
a lot of them talk about their application layer platform. They talk about the application layer platform. They talk about visualization. They talk about AI data analytics. I don't know whether you agree with me. It's so crowded now over there. Or they talk about their sensors, actuators, and you know their edge level devices. But everybody forgot about uh, the fact that there's so many protocols to convert. And that becomes a, a stop point. That becomes a choke point. Okay, in which it, it, is, uh, it becomes an issue in being able to uh, implement or adopt for the customers to adopt uh, IoT, all right? So what is the alternative to context gateway that provides an open platform? Customization, software. There are some software people who have some protocols, some protocols, but you need to go and look for an industrial PC. You need to look for the different interfaces to try to connect all of this. So why is context so different? I will go through my next slides and then you will feel bold over and <laughs> you will want to work with uh, Mark Fanky to, uh, to look at IoT for your organization, okay? Okay, before I go into that, the exciting part, let me just give you an idea of how contact over the last 80 plus years evolved into, uh, you know, the IoT uh, solution company that you have to look at. 83 years ago, they started on data acquisition hardware. Then they went into industrial PC, okay? And then they went into network hardware. 30 years ago, they went into renewable energy monitoring solution, hardware and software. Then they also started their own uh, solar farm 30 years ago. They have a, a 50, 50, um, uh, megawatt, 50 megawatt uh, solar farm in Japan. So when they were doing this, they realized there's so many protocols to convert. So what they did is they combined all of this the different protocols and they, it came into the product called Comprosis. So before I go into the Comprosis, the controller, let me just give you an overview of context overall solutions, uh, all right? Uh, they have uh, sensors, over 2,000 um, sensors, more than 500 indoor sensors and more than 1,500 outdoor sensors for environment, uh, air, water, soil, for manufacturing, for farms, for predictive preventive uh, maintenance, for building management, for clean, green, green energy monitoring and control, sensors with LoRa wireless, sub gigahertz wireless, and so on, and other data acquisition products that you see down here. Okay, they have, uh, sorry, they have uh, PCI and uh, PCIe products. Okay. They have PCI and PCIe products, over 400 types. Okay, these are the traditional products that you use in uh, automation and control, okay? With the various IO, uh, also support Windows and Linux. And it comes with uh, uh, API driver support, uh, which include um, utility and sample program. So it makes it easy for you to implement, okay? And then uh, we also support MATLAB and LabVIEW. These are actually electronic measurement and analysis software. So those that are using MATLAB and LabVIEW, we can easily integrate with those. And these are the USB version of all these uh, PCI, PCIe card. We have uh, wireless IO modules, uh, and these are in sub gigahertz wireless. Uh, I think in Indonesia is similar to Singapore. You use 920 megahertz. Other countries uses uh, 863 megahertz. So one master can support uh, 100 slaves in a diameter of uh, one kilometer. So because this is uh, 920 megahertz, low power, so you can use a battery uh, and then four to five years, uh, it can last. So you can create a wireless mesh with this. Uh, bus expansion unit, if you don't have enough PCI, PCI slots, you can use a bus expansion unit and you have the application development tools to support different, uh, uh, you know, uh, to integrate with different platforms. They don't really want to do digital signage, but because they want to support smart retail and smart kiosk system, uh, they have this digital signage solution. So if you have your own monitors, you can use this Android box. Android box. Uh, it comes with a content management software inside. So uh, very low cost. Uh, you know, end user price is only about uh, end user price. It's only about the six hundred plus seven hundred plus sing dollars. Okay, so it comes with full content 
management software. All right. So if you don't have your own monitor, you want the full kiosk, you can buy the full kiosk. It comes with the board level uh, media player and of course the content management uh, system inside. I mentioned to you, Contact is very strong in its uh, industrial PC. Uh, they just announced the industrial PC which is palm top size, just the size of your hand. Okay. Then they have the, this one is a paperback book size. Then those with the McAfee built in. So they are very strong in, uh, in, uh, in all of them are fanless. They have the industrial panel computers, uh, industrial stand PC looks like a monitor, but with a CPU inside. This just introduced uh, uh, last year, middle of last year. Factory automation computers. We can customize all of these, uh, depending on the RAM you need, depending on the different types of uh, OS, Linux, no OS, or you want my, uh, uh, Windows OS. Uh, we, with our factory automation computers, we can even have up to 12 gigabit ports. We have many of these machines running in places like India and, uh, uh, and so on. It's running for 12 years, 24 by 7 and still working fine. Then we have the chassis type of uh, industrial PC we, where we can put in the PCI, PCIe slots here and then it becomes a full-blown uh, industrial PC. We have the industrial wireless. This is the 2.4 5 gig wireless. We have board level wireless that uh, the adapter for embedded system. We have a LoRa wireless modules. Our LoRa uh, module to module, we can go up to 17, 17 kilometers. We have 3G, 4G, LTE, um, sub gigahertz wireless, uh, 5G and uh, NB IoT. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit more about the Comprosis, our uh, star product. Okay, um, the black units that you see here is called the integrated device. Okay, the one without the antenna is the wired one. The one with the antenna is the wireless one. Now, our integrated um, uh, controller come with fixed I.O. ports. <coughs> Excuse me. Could be two wire, three wire, analog, serial com, could be EN Ocean, could be USB, could be Ethernet, uh, you know, Zigbee and so on, all right? Um, and can support 30 wired devices, 30 wired wireless, of course, more than that, depending on the wireless module. Now, the orange units, the orange units here, they are the configurable type. So you look at this one, this is the main unit, all right? I can stack all the modules horizontally, I just slide and stack all the modules depending on the type of I.O. that I want, whether I want the LoRa wireless module and so on. Now, one unit like this can stack up to 16 of these modules. A stack of 16 modules can support 256, 256, 256 uh, um, sensors and devices, right? 256. Now, the main unit here, come with two gigabit ethernet ports. So I can daisy chain down up to 10. So wired devices, I can support 256 times 10, 2,560, then wireless more than that, okay? Now, what makes our solution very good? Okay, what makes our solution very good? Inside this gateway, it is not just like an, another gateway or controller. A lot of other gateway and controller, they call themselves IoT gateway or controller. They just come with one or two protocol, Modbus or whatsoever. And then they also support, uh, you know, uh, serial com and so on. But what we do all that and more, in addition to that, we also provide instant acceptance inside this box. Huh? Instant acceptance and conversion of the 300 over protocol. Just drag and drop, uh, just, you know, point this protocol in, this protocol out. This protocol in, this protocol. Just configuration, okay? Free HMI, human machine interface. You don't need to create, buy all those visualization software. You don't need to. We provide free of charge, okay? So you drag and drop to create the visualization that you need, okay? No programming needed. Then when you create the visualization, you need the visualization to come alive, right? So you need to write programs, right? No need. For us, no need. We give you free virtual task control. So instead of writing programs, you drag and drop all the tasks that we have, the library of tasks to create a flow chart, right? To drive tasks, operation, control, transmissions, calculation, no programming needed. Free C logger built in, 
free middleware to integrate with MATLAB or LabVIEW, free OPC built-in, OPC UA, free Azure, AWS, Fujitsu cloud engines built-in. So you don't need to go and do a setup over here for this cloud. Uh, you can just uh, key in the URL, uh, you know, your credentials, and then you can start to transmit via MQTT, all right, or whatever other uh, forms of transmission. Can easily integrate with private cloud, other cloud providers, or on-premise server. If you're running everything from my controller, from this controller, no yearly license fee, free updates and upgrades. So here we are looking, we are assuming that you, you or your customer have the application platform. But if you don't have your own application platform, you can also come to us, we can help you to set up the application platform on the cloud, okay, or your on-premise server. But for that, we charge a, a license fee. But if you're running it from here, where everything is built in, well, no yearly license fee, free updates and upgrades. Even OPC, everything, license paid for, everything done, okay? Uh, I'm not going to tell you on the price. I'm going to let uh, Pafenki uh, pleasantly shock you when he gets the prices uh, on what the price is, all right? Okay, so I just want to uh, get you excited about the technology. So the third unit that you see over here, the third unit that you see over here is actually uh, having the full, all the protocols inside. Okay, but some people say, uh, you know, I don't want the full protocol inside. Can you give me uh, something with uh, one or two protocols or three or four protocols or 10 protocols? So we have the M2M controller, and M2M gateway. So this one support OPC, UA, MT Connect and a few other protocols. But of course, the other protocols are interchangeable depending on what you want, all right? So this one is, this third unit is dual core. That's why it supports all the protocols. These two are single core. So you can have different types of protocol inside I have to keep in mind that it's single core. Okay, this one supports PLC, CNC manufacturers, and some other protocols. This one supports uh, all protocol. Here, this is a quad core uh, device. So the main CPU, you can still stack up like all the others with the different types of uh, um, IO modules. But because it has quad core, you, if you want to do AI and data analytics at the edge, you can use this device as well because sometimes you don't want the information all to go back to the back end and then it crunch the data and then it uh, reacts to it. You want to do it at the edge so you can use this, all right? The last one here is a nano. It's so low cost, you can't believe it. This one doesn't come with a processor. It is a remote IO device. It's a slave, okay? For example, uh, the items one, two, three, and four can be Modbus master and then this one can be Modbus slave, all right? So, uh, contact came out with this because it wants to make it low cost, right? So whatever I'm explaining to you, maybe you can uh, put the jigsaw puzzle pieces together in this architecture, all right? In this architecture. So you see over here, uh, you have uh, in uh, over here are all the applications, right? Here are all the applications. You got your factory, you got your manufacturing area, you got your water treatment plants and uh, so on. And here are all the things that you want to digitize, okay? It could be power conditioner, it could be pump, it could be CNC machines or uh, motors and actuators built into the machines. So what Contact does is from here, it provides a physical connectivity. Like I mentioned to you, two wire, three wire, analog serial com, could be, uh, you know, ethernet port, could be USB whatsoever. It provides a physical connectivity, okay? And then at this layer, it accepts all the different protocols, converts them to TCP IP and pushes to the application platform via Modbus TCP IP or MT Connect or OPC UA or HTTPS or MQTT and so on. So it could be third party uh, platform. It could be your SCADA system or similar type of uh, uh, supervisory and monitoring system. Or if you do not have, and then we can, you can use our uh, HMI to build your own platform. Now, our focus, even though we are able to cover from end to end, we don't want to compete with those who have your own platform. So if your customers or you have your own platform, you don't need to use our product. Uh, you don't need to use our platform uh, at the application layer. You can just use our Comprosys uh, devices to help you to collect the data convert to, to TCP IP and to push to your platform. So you don't need to use our application.
platform. So those system integrators, those customers that have their own platform, please think of us as complementary to your, to your platform, to your application platform, because our strength is on the, uh, oh no, we are strong throughout, but we want to focus on our demand creator. Okay, our demand creator over here. And if you have your own sensors, you have your own, um, you know, edge devices, in the data acquisition product, please cannibalize our business. Don't need to use our sensors. You can use your own sensors. You can use your own, you know, uh, if you already are a distributor or you have your own brands or you have your existing sensors, uh, don't have to throw them away. Uh, um, and don't need to use our sensors. We just, we, we are able to collect all the information from the various brands and various systems, and we can help to push into the uh, various platform to, uh, and, and in a very cost effective manner, do it quickly and uh, in a manner in which customers feel comfortable. So what is the pain point in the market? Okay, on IoT, like I told you, first and foremost, all the protocols to convert, and then the programs to write, to run tasks and all that. Uh, and then it is very expensive. It takes very long and customers don't like it. When you write a customized software, they feel threatened because you control the customer, okay? And, and a lot of customers are afraid of that. But when you tell the customers this, hey, look, use my solution, use my solution, don't worry. Uh, if my service is no good, you know, you can cut, cut me off anytime. You can work with another partner. They feel comfortable with you, they want to work with you, okay? So let me just, uh, I believe there are some uh, uh, participants here from the university. Uh, in Singapore, Singapore Poly uh, and in, uh, IT, they are using our systems uh, to teach the students on IoT. In fact, now Singapore Poly is very famous in Singapore for the IoT uh, teaching uh, curriculum. Uh, ourselves and Contact work together with Singapore Poly to come up with the curriculum and they use all our systems to teach the students on IoT. So much so that all the government uh, agencies all go and visit Singapore Poly, uh, even uh, Rolls-Royce, Panasonic, they all send their staff to Singapore Polytechnic to, to as an adult learning course for uh, IoT. Of course, the full-time students, they are, it's part of their curriculum, right? Now, uh, uh, Nanyang Polytechnic uh, and uh, Nian Polytechnic, they also want to implement our system. In ITE, Institute of Technical Education, they are using our systems to teach the student on condition monitoring and on predictive preventive maintenance uh, solutions, right? GovTech, GovTech is, belongs to the Singapore government, all right? They are helping to drive the IoT solution in the market as a whole, all right? Whereas ARTC and SimTech, which I mentioned to you, uh, under ASTAR, they're just on the manufacturing. But for GovTech is on the smart nation, um, about, I need to share this with you because you need to understand how powerful and how strong contact is as a solution. About two years ago, uh, GovTech came up with a tender for the application layer for uh, IoT. They call it the Takada platform. Okay, they call it the Takada platform. So they, we got our system integrator to front the project. Uh, they fund the project, but they didn't get it, the, the tender. And I believe at that time, the GovTech was not sure also about how IoT is going to move. And they don't understand when we told them ours is open platform and ours is not open architecture. So they give this tender to a China company called Envision. Okay. So I told my system integrators, don't worry. Uh, they got the application layer. Uh, they will have a lot of problem on the device edge layer. So when they have this issue, we go in and we uh, provide the solution. After one year, nothing happened. So I call the GovTech and say, hey, what's happening? Why, you know, after one year, you all give the tender to Envision at the application layer. Why are you all not throwing up tender? He said, oh, Harry, we are solving issue on the edge. I said, don't tell me you're writing protocols to convert the various, uh, uh, you know, writing software to write the different protocols. They say, yeah, we are doing that. I say, why do you want to do that? I already told you many times we have open platform. We do automatic protocol conversion. And then only they suddenly hit their mind because they were struggling with doing the protocol conversion. 
<laughs> they understood. So they said, oh, come on, Harry, there are 100 over protocol in the market. You mean y'all can do uh, instant protocol conversion for 100 over? I said, sorry, I cannot do 100 over. I can do 300 over. So, <laughs> so it was very funny. So they said, can you come down immediately? So that was about nine months ago, all right? So yeah, it took us about nine months to onboard. The reason is because they have a lot of security things that they want to incorporate into the gateway. So because Contact has an R&D, uh, so they, we obliged the Singapore government and we incorporate the security solution. Then three months ago, we did the testing and then we saw some error. And then we realized GovTech gave us some wrong information. So they rechanged the information. Finally, we got it uh, onboarded. So uh, GovTech sent some of the equipment to do to Japan, contact Japan to do final testing. It's already done and we're now sending it back. So next time when the tenders for smart city, uh, smart buildings and all that are drawn from the government, you'll find our contacts on process uh, as part of the tender specs, okay? Okay, I'll just keep this. Now, this is what the HMI looks like. Uh, the, the actual, um, before you run the human machine interface. So on the right hand side here, you see the equipment that is connected to our IO ports in our Comprosis, all right? Here you see all the library of the images over here. So let's say down here, you see a temperature sensor, which is connected to probably our Comprosis here with the, one of the IO port. You see our a temperature sensor here. So you drag and drop a, a thermometer over here. You click on it and assign it to the temperature sensor and it's done. So now when the temperature hits certain tem uh, temperature, you want a danger light. So you drag and drop and you create a danger light over here. Yeah, and you hit certain temperature, the danger light comes on, you want the switch to go off, you want it to switch off, you drag and drop, you create the switch, right? And then you can have graph charts and all that over here uh, when you do condition monitoring. And you can also pull in the uh, IP camera image over here so in the manufacturing or in your power plant or what, something goes wrong, you want to see what went wrong, you want to see the image, you can also see here, all right? You don't like the images, no problem. You can import your own audio, video, and image file over here and you can make it as part of the library, all right? So now you drag and drop, you create the visualization. But the visualization is dead. Without any programming, the visualization won't come alive. Without any programming, the, the, the thermometer won't go up and down. Without any programming, uh, when, when temperature hits certain level, the light won't go up. So you need to write program, right? For us, no need. No need. You just uh, create a flow chart, all right? So we have this thing called virtual task control. So over here, you have all the various tasks. We can, in this grid, we can do up to 2,400 uh, 2, uh, tasks. So I read from here. You drag the function icons from the toolbox to the grid area. You can run a variety of tasks with intuitive operation. No need for knowledge of programming. No need special development kit. So a variety of tasks such as IO, device IO, calculation, flow control, string operations, uh, cloud data transmission, file operation, all can be done. So you create the flow chart and you run it. You run it. Then you come and say, hey, Harry, my my customer has a very unique task, you know, uh, and I cannot find this task here. Okay, believe you me, contact with AT over experience have put as many, whatever task you need is inside, but your customer is very unique. You don't have the task, very simple, very simple. You can write a program, create a task, and you can put it as part of the task over here, all right? So these are all the use cases, the use cases of uh, contact. I will just leave here for a few seconds and then I will go into the use cases. A few seconds for you to just glance through and then I will go into the, uh, the actual, um, uh, you know, the, the use cases itself. Okay, so con this is one of the use cases. This is done with Daikin, Daikin uh, HVAC system, aircon system. So this looking at building energy management system, all right? So uh, you can use it for the factory, hospital, office building. It does remote monitoring and operating status of the outdoor and the indoor HVAC system, mainly for maintenance purpose. So you can see the operating status, error um, um, uh, messages. You know, uh, when your systems are operating, uh, sometimes there are error signals. Uh, 
but the system is still working fine. So we pick up all these error signals, vibration, and with that, we are able to provide predictive uh, information, predictive maintenance information for the maintenance people, all right? This is elevator lift monitoring application. In Singapore, you have Marina One. So some of you have come to Singapore. You, if you would like to go to MBS, near MBS, Marina Bay Sands, near MBS, you have Marina One. 74 of their lifts are using our contact solution, all right? Contact solution. Now, uh, uh, globally, we have more uh, than just this. So in Marina One, when the lifts go at, um, up and down, it generates power. So contact system is able to provide power generation, consumption status monitoring, uh, escalator utilization status monitoring, energy conversion, history logs, alarm logs, and provide preventive maintenance information. Also, during off-peak period, it will be able to load balance the lift so that the lift that have been used most will be put at rest, and those that have been used least will be in, uh, in operation. Okay, so in the elevator monitoring, we, are, we can use the wireless remote I.O. connectivity. We can use sub-gigahertz uh, wireless so that we don't need to compete with the 2.4 gig or 5 gig. We can use 920 megahertz. Then lift control, speed tracking, position sensor tracking, current leakage, failure and analytics, people counter. Now some lift people, some lift companies don't like you to touch the controller box. They don't like us to take information from the serial port. No problem. We can uh, put a ZCT sensor to the power cable to the motor over here, and then we can put a vibration um, um, uh, sensor. And then from the controller, we just use dry contact to see which the leaf company uh, don't mind. Uh, all of them don't mind as long as you don't touch their serial comp uh, information. Uh, so you just get a dry contact information on leaf floor, leaf door open, close, whether it's fully closed, don't never uh, close and so on. And then um, load balancing and many others. Then we can provide the predictive uh, information to the leaf monitoring uh, or maintenance people. Contact is very strong in manufacturing, very, very strong because they have their own manufacturing plants which are using IoT, their own uh, manufacturing plants in China, Japan, Taiwan, US, and so on. Okay. So, but in order to help uh, customers understand, uh, they broke it up into packages like mounting line package, static checker, torque driver measuring system, uh, solder iron, mat switch. So these become like kits. Uh. So, but normally my experience is normally the customer look at kits and then they start to add this, add that, and then become a full uh, uh, solution that they need. This is a visitor tracking system. This is not a camera over here. This is a bi-directional infrared uh, visitor tracking system. So it's uni or bi-directional IR type. It's not like a traditional one. The traditional one is at the site. So when two people walk together, three people walk together, sometimes it counts as one. Ours is on top, it creates a dome. Any number of people in the dome or passing through the dome, we can count uh, accurately because it counts the heads and the shoulders. Okay, this is a hydraulic backup power system in Japan. All right. So during daylight, it uses solar power okay, uh, to generate electricity to drive the turbines. Of course, uh, it can use uh, uh, diesel or you know, um, petrol or whatever, uh, diesel and so on. But uh, as far as possible, it, where the sun is available, it uses solar. But when night time and all that, um, with the energy that is stored, it can also push water up and then the water comes down and then it drives the turbine engine. All right. So it provides uh, additional hydraulic power during peak period and where there's no uh, solar power or where there's, uh, you need to provide uh, for spike in demand. Okay, uh, this is a visualization. Forgive the Japanese words. Uh, it can come in multiple languages. Uh, all right. Um, so here they are doing solar power monitoring, uh, and it looks at things like uh, power system status monitoring, energy conversion, and real time monitoring. Real time monitoring. So Contact also have a string box solution for monitoring uh, solar pa panels. Normally, most of the companies they look at per grid. Okay, all the solar panels in this grid or this grid. You contact, you have a string box solution where you can look at each solar panel and to see whether 
they are in full efficiency or there's bird dropping or it's dirty and then if it's not efficient and then you can send the uh, maintenance people. Okay, this is uh, the actual solar farm of contact. So you have a camera that is part of the dashboard. Uh, sorry, uh, the Japanese like to use uh, this kind of cartoon images. Uh, I hope you don't have the thinking or that all our pictures in our library in the HMI is like cartoon. It's not. Uh, it's just that the Japanese like to use this type of cartoon image. Okay, this is the own, their own uh, mega, 50 megawatt solar farm. So you create all this visualization using context composites, all this measurement, all this monitoring. And context is not just about monitoring, it's also about control uh, and uh, management. Okay, this is water tank uh, monitoring. Water tank monitoring. So this one is a use case in a hospital, but you can use it in a factory. You can use it in hospital, public facility, you can use it in apartment blocks. So it measures the uh, water level, the suspended solids in the water, the water quality, whether there are impurities, water temperature. And if the water is not clean, it will, the flow meter will be activated and then it will push to the uh, cleaning tank and then uh, using the pump and then the cleaning tank will clean it and then pump back. All right. This one may be uh, something useful in Indonesia, integrated energy analyzer. So for hospitals and where they are, you know, very sensitive equipment like uh, in medical centers or in uh, wafer, fab wafer fabrication plants, you need an energy analyzer. So it analyzes the energy and it provides the information necessary for you to use the right kind of uh, electrical energy uh, you know, a protection system on your on your uh, facility, and it will continuously monitor if there are any changes in the behavior of the energy supply. It will also alert you. Water facility monitoring system. Okay, same thing. Another one. This is by Ogano. Ogano does this water monitoring system all over Japan. Okay, all over Japan. So from the source, from the source to the reservoir. Uh, uh, where it's collected at the reservoir, at the reservoir level, uh, to the uh, water purification uh, plants, to the sub, uh, uh, what do you call that, collection system, to the uh, end user, all these can be monitored, okay? So you have your network backbone uh, using wider sub gigahertz wireless, LoRa, or could be fiber, and right to the end using cellular at the um, you know, at the plant team or the end customer, uh, you use uh, cellular network. Plant gate monitoring system, as, uh, after the tsunami, uh, the Japanese government worked with contact and all over Japan for the flood level monitoring and the flood gate control system is using contact's uh, solution. Okay, this uh, lamppost monitoring system uh, we are right now uh, working with GovTech. They have actually sent their lamp head uh, among the other equipment to uh, contact Japan to do a final testing with Contact's uh, Comprosis. We have done the remote testing already. We've done the final testing and it's been sent back. So we are looking at working on this. In Thailand, we are working with also uh, a government link company on smart lampposts. Smart lampposts is not just about monitoring the lampposts, whether it's working or not. Okay, we also include all the sensors, the temperature, the sun intensity, the humidity, uh, you know, and then uh, in terms of surveillance cameras, in terms of, you know, even wayfinder uh, with, the, with the GPS, so people can see where they are, can also put, um, you know, um, like a digital uh, notice board where people, where, tourists and people can uh, get information. Uh, and of course, all of this, uh, if you're talking about video surveillance, it has to go through the fiber network. But if you're talking about uh, all these different sensor nodes, we can link them all up using sub gigahertz wireless, uh, LoRa wireless, and then after that, use uh, one of the, the master to use uh, 4G or NB IoT to uh, send back to the um, monitoring station. Telecom tower and data center generator set monitoring. We believe that one of the biggest market in uh, Indonesia is uh, 
uh, telecom tower monitoring um, because uh, in Indonesia, uh, sometimes um, the power that is provided to all these telecom tower, the charges are more than what they calculate on their equipment that is being used. So a lot of telecom tower people, they want to monitor the uh, power that is uh, being um, used over there and they want to calculate it in relation to the equipment and also the generator set monitoring uh, because uh, you know for data centers and telecom tower last thing you want to happen is when there's no electricity your generator set also not working so remotely we can monitor all brands of um, generator set and we can based on the schedule interval we can drive the generator set using the inverter remotely uh, and automatically based on uh, based on uh, you know uh, the schedule and, and and we can see whether it's in good working condition or not okay uh, at once uh, automatic train control system where the distance between the train can be automatically managed platform train monitoring system so here we look at predictive uh, uh, information to be given to the maintenance people because if the door is not properly closed the train cannot move so we all the components inside we can monitor uh, all the sub components and we are able to transmit it to the monitoring station and the maintenance staff can buy the stock because sometimes escalators elevators and all that you, you are worried you buy too much stock you know of the spare parts nothing moving you do you miscalculate the stocks of the spares? Wow, your system can be stalled for one month, two months, three months, waiting for the spares to come. And at the same time, you also want to be able to plan your maintenance staff to do predictive maintenance. This is in Shanghai, underground city in Shanghai. Okay, uh, here we monitor the gas, <coughs> methane concentration, air quality, hydrogen, alcohol, <coughs> carbon temperature and also detect the people all right so to manage crowd to change the behavior of people by changing the schedule of the transport system uh, above ground and underground uh, and so on it is very interesting this is a SCIT Sichuan buys 100 sets of this construction hazard site systems from contact so with this system they uh, every month uh, they buy uh, SCIT so with this, in their construction site, they are able to measure temperature, humidity, water level condition, what the soil condition, whether all these construction areas, uh, whether there's a tilt. If there's a tilt more than what is accepted, there may be a danger of collapse. If the ground is not so good because of continuous rain and then uh, there are some issues on the ground and then uh, they need to strengthen it. And they, if, you, if there isn't a continuous monitoring, it can be hazardous. So all this prevent collapse of construction and accident. So they have also used it in tunneling works uh, in the mountains uh, in, uh, in China. Yeah, this one is a use case on a company that uh, rents out crane. They rent out crane and then you, if you imagine uh, if in Indonesia you have a company that's renting out crane. It will be all over the country. Uh, all right. Uh, and then how does the person monitor uh, the condition of the crane, the location of the crane, whether it's being used or not. Some of these... Uh, are uh, only charged based on when they start the engine. So you can, from Jakarta, you may have a, 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 a crane in Surabaya area, but they will not be charged until they start using the crane. So uh, based on usage basis, uh, you can charge them and so on. All right. Okay, I'll skip this. This is in uh, Singapore, Global Foundry, a uh, semicon uh, manufacturer. So this is an unmanned autonomous overhead monorail system. Okay, so this one can go up to 60 kilometers per hour. This one is on the factory floor, can pull uh, autonomous uh, unmanned vehicle also can pull between five to six tons of, uh, of uh, weight. Okay, um, Daifuku has, uh, is number one in, uh, you know, uh, material handling, warehousing and so on. So, Every solution that you want on the warehouse management, uh, you know, we have it from warehouse management system in the logistic control, the flow process, the delivery order, and so on, to even automated, uh, you know, packaging system, to even monitoring the forklifts, the trucks, uh, and so on. All this we have. 
we do not do RFID project on its own. We do RFID project if it is part of the warehouse management system because RFID is now so, too many competitors, uh, very cheap and very low margin. But if it's part of this warehouse management system, yes, we do. Okay, uh, so, okay, this one 868 megahertz in other countries. In, Singa in uh, Indonesia, it's 920 megahertz. This is just to show you our uh, power saving, uh, you know, low frequency, low power, uh, utilization wireless devices used in Komatsu's, Komatsu's uh, forklifts. So Komatsu's forklifts all have a, a monitor. So uh, they can retrieve and get the information from the back end with the monitor. And then whenever tasks are completed, where it's keyed in, uh, it goes to the back end. But at the same time, we can also, with this uh, multi-hop system, if one uh, connection fails, you know, it takes another connection, it takes the fastest route, you can monitor whether the uh, um, you know the worker is working or not working, whether the machine is on or off, or whether you know uh, there needs to be maintenance for the forklift and so on. Supply chain management. This is uh, we can also monitor the fuel levels in a, in a petrol station, but I think a lot of petrol stations don't want us to touch this. Uh. <laughs> okay, smart farming. Uh. Smart farming is a big thing now in Singapore. Because, uh, you know, we want to increase, especially after the COVID-19, we want to increase from 9% uh, to 30% for local food production on fish, eggs, and uh, vegetables. But in Vietnam, uh, Vietnam uh, agriculture is also um, similar to uh, Indonesia. Vietnam, they use a lot of smart farming. You know why? Because they export a lot of their farming products to EU. EU have the European Union, uh, EU have very strict control on quality, on, you know, pesticide and uh, impurities that, you know, that is inside the soil. So they use this smart farming method uh, to, to give a proof that everything is above board, everything is within the EU standard. And, and then their, their product, their product, their export to EU increase a lot. We are now working with uh, Malaysia also on paddy farms. Uh, and halal, halal uh, production of, uh, you know, food production from um, seed to, you know, uh, to growth level to, you know, to the wholesalers and so on. All right. So here, uh, there are two types of farms. There's the indoor farm and the outdoor farm. All right. So uh, in the outdoor farm, we can, we can do things like monitor things like solar power harvesting, water harvesting, uh, you know, on the soil, the uh, condition of the soil, um, the condition, you know, in terms of the fertilizers, uh, whether it's adequate, whether, you know, there's too much of pesticide, uh, in terms of uh, the condition of the plants. Uh, we can also use our own drone system to, and with our video analytics, to provide an overview of the farm. Uh, so you can also use our our unmanned autonomous uh, um, you know drone system with the video analytics and uh, indoor farm we not only look at what is on the outdoor we also look at conditions in the indoor just like in the outdoor because here you may want to grow crops that you cannot grow on the outside like for example Indonesia you have the tropical climate but you want to grow cherry tomatoes which is can only be grown in a temperate countries uh, and you import in it's very expensive so you want to grow locally so cherry tomatoes strawberries you can grow in this kind of environment we look at environment conditions uh, and then we also do condition monitoring of fans of pumps for motors the fertilizer machine uh, the water dispensing machine um, the condition itself uh, and you know predictive maintenance information to the farmers or the monitoring uh, the monitoring system. Okay, so now let me tell you something about my company, Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific is a 30-year-old uh, company. Uh, our company has uh, offices in, um, in many parts of ASEAN as well in, in Oceania. And because we, uh, we are regional, but we have local offices, we have speed to market, and we have uh, comprehensive market support. We have our staff trained and with professionalism to support our partners. 
uh, like PT Fanky's uh, uh, company, they are our channel partners. And with the regional expertise, we provide dedicated resources. We help in the demand creation, like what we are doing now. Uh, we contact and composite. <laughs> and then we can also uh, support on regional marketing campaigns. For the universities, if you want to implement IoT learning systems, uh, you, can, uh, you can contact uh, Pak Fanky and then we can work together with you, with my Indonesian team. My Indonesian team is, uh, is uh, I, I will give you their contacts later. So, as I mentioned, we have uh, uh, six countries. Uh, Craig is our CEO um and uh, he, he's located in singapore uh, married a singaporean <laughs> okay so we have uh, indonesia the highest number of people uh local uh, local um, then uh, malaysia singapore we have 33 thailand 42 uh, australia 28 and uh, new zealand we, we just started uh, too so you can see we have a full team suite of team to support our channel partners regionally uh, all right yeah, I want to stress uh, our products and services are delivered only through our channel partners. If we are talking to end customers, we are only helping to do the evangelization. We are only helping to promote the product, but we only work through our channel partners. So one of our channel partner, system integration and solution partner, uh, I think you all know Fanky and his company. All right. So you have his contact over here. Then you have PT uh, Asia Pacific, uh, Viranto is the managing director. I think maybe many of you know uh, Viranto and his team members, uh, Hatono and uh, Bambang. Okay. Uh, and then this is me. Uh, uh, this the handsome guy here is me. Okay. <laughs> I'm 53 years old. Uh, so uh, even though the photo looks a bit young, I'm, I'm not that young. Okay. So I'm the director of IoT uh, business unit in uh, Asia uh, Pacific. Uh, okay, so um, this is my contact details, my mobile number, and you can also connect with me in LinkedIn. Okay, my name sounds Indonesian, but actually I'm, I'm not from Indonesia. I'm from, uh, my ancestors come from India, so I was born and bred in Singapore, all right? Okay, so so if some of you think I'm Indonesian, and then, uh, yeah, how come this Indonesian cannot speak Bahasa Indonesia? Actually, I can understand. Uh, it's just that when I speak, uh, sometimes... Uh, uh, people don't understand. <laughs> okay, I finished my presentation. I hand you over now to uh, to Pa Fanky. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Harry, for sharing uh, to us so many use case. Yeah, jadi penggunaan dari IoT. Ya, Bapak Ibu sekalian, kita akan masuk ke sesi Q&A kita. Uh, Pak Aldi Kurniawan, monitor. Iya, Pak. Oke, okay, jadi ada beberapa pertanyaan yang tadi sudah disampaikan oleh para peserta kita pada siang kali ini ya. Pak Aldi tadi sudah saya taruh di chat box ya. Harry, you can check your chat box. I, I already pass you the all the question from the attendees. Oke. Okay. Yeah. Oke, okay, uh, let's go for the Pak Aldi first ya. Pak Aldi, uh, ada pertanyaan dari Pak Muhammad Riza nih. Lor Lorawan, ini sudah include baterai tanam atau baterainya juga dapat dilepas ya Pak? Silakan Pak Aldi. Jadi kalau untuk produk kami ada beberapa yang menggunakan direct uh, menggunakan listrik atau DC power, ada juga yang menggunakan baterai. Nah, yang menggunakan baterai itu memang kita sistemnya tidak ditanam, jadi memang kita bisa diganti. Gitu. Uh, contohnya kita punya produk tadi gas meter, di mana gas meter itu kami menggunakan baterai A2 uh, 4 piece karena kebutuhan untuk dari gas meter itu baterainya harus uh, non eksplosif. Namun konsekuensi dari kita menggunakan baterai A2 itu uh, lifetime-nya memang menjadi sedikit lebih singkat. Tetapi kita pernah coba kita tes dengan menggunakan baterai A2 4 piece itu kita bisa bertahan sampai 2 tahun. Dengan dua tahun, ya. setiap satu jam sekali. Nah, contoh lainnya yang menggunakan water meter itu kita menggunakan lithium ion itu bisa bertahan sampai 5 tahun dengan pembacaan satu jam sekali. Oke. Okay. Ya, jadi itu ya Pak Muhammad Riza, mudah-mudahan menjawab. Selanjutnya saya lanjut ke Pak Hardian Restu ini. Uh, pengiriman data ke server apakah bisa dilakukan secara real-time apabila menerapkan teknologi LoRa? Ya, uh, kalau teknologi LoRa kita bisa bilang dia tidak benar-benar real-time, tapi berdasarkan interval, Pak. Namun interval itu kita bisa set 
sesuai dengan kebutuhan. Jadi seperti tadi saya sempat bilang, interval itu kita bisa set apakah dia butuh 15 menit sekali, ataupun 10 menit sekali, atau satu jam sekali, ataupun satu hari sekali. Nah itu kita bisa atur dari server. Oke, berikutnya juga untuk tampilan dashboard yang tadi dipresentasikan, eh, apakah eh, untuk performanya custom atau sudah jadi seperti itu? Ya, kebetulan kami punya SI company, Pak, sister company kami, sehingga kami ini untuk pembuatan web itu bisa di custom. Jadi tadi merupakan salah satu contoh di klien kita yang sudah menggunakan IoT, itu seperti itu. Namun setiap perusahaan biasanya beda-beda sesuai dengan kebutuhan mereka. Jadi kita bisa custom untuk dashboardnya, tampilannya. Gitu, Pak. Oke, benar-benar menjawab ya Pak uh, Adian Restu ya. ya. Selanjutnya Pak Wendy nih, Pak Wendy bertanya nih ya untuk perjalanan data dari sensor, artinya dari sensor gateway network, server core dan seterusnya, apakah core itu akan dapat data dari network server? Network server ini apakah fasilitas dari manufacturer gateway yang dapat digunakan free jika memakai gateway perangkat tersebut? Apakah seperti itu? Oke, jadi kalau tadi untuk perjalanan datanya sudah benar Pak, memang dari sensor, gateway, lalu ke network server, lalu ada core kami yang tadi sempat saya jelaskan, lalu baru masuk ke web apps ataupun mobile apps, itu sudah betul. Namun untuk masalah network server, itu network server ini ada beda-beda Pak, tadi saya ada beberapa contoh, ada salah satunya misalkan ada Telkom Antares, Uh, antara situ kita harus berlangganan atau subscribe ke Telkom. Ataupun ada juga yang dari Kerling, nah itu kita juga emang ada biaya subscription-nya. Ataupun sebenarnya yang tadi saya sempat show juga ada yang di paling kanan, yaitu The Things Network, mungkin Bapak bisa search di Google. Nah itu merupakan network server yang open source, jadi kita bisa langsung pakai free dari situ, Pak. Oke. Okay. Kemudian terakhir ini dari Pak Krisna Deksa ya, bagaimana jika IoT mengalami kendala ya, jadi mungkin maksudnya problem ini Pak, apa yang harus dilakukan biasanya? Jadi pertama kali kita harus mengadres dulu sebenarnya kendalanya ada di diri mana, apakah dari sisi device, karena kan dari IoT itu merupakan suatu sistem ya Pak ya, jadi dari si device sampai kepada software. Sebenarnya dengan IoT ini kita akan lebih mudah dapat mengadres, pertama kita bisa lihat dari sistem, apakah sistemnya itu dia update atau tidak update gitu ya. Jadi sebenarnya dengan adanya ini justru mempermudahkan. E, misalkan kita mengecek ternyata dari sistem itu ternyata device-nya tidak update, baru kita bisa cek ke hardware. Namun apabila hardware-nya oke, okay, berarti kita baru cek ke arah koneksinya. Gitu. Cuma, jadi e, sebenarnya sih dengan adanya ini, jadi kita lebih mudah nih Pak, jadi mengetahui misalkan ada tiba-tiba di, device yang rusak, itu kita akan mendapatkan alertnya. Ya. Yeah. Oke, jadi itu gunanya apa namanya diterapkan oleh Wira Energi ya Pak ya untuk bisa memudahkan bisa melihat problemnya ada di mana ya. ya betul, Pak. Oke, selanjutnya saya masuk ke pertanyaan yang diberikan ke Mr. Harry. Ada I, Harry, I think you already receive the question, right? Yeah, I, I'm ready. I can, I can, I can. Okay, so you want me to just answer? Or you want to? Uh... You want to uh, ask a question and then you want me to answer or just okay. let let me ask the question yeah by one by one yeah, because it's only uh, five question right no problem yeah, from Pak Asep Solahuddin uh, the IoT RPA robot AI cloud service automation sensor etc seems like at the end we replace the main power so what we should do not being eliminated with the this technology what do you think Eric actually actually uh, uh, there's two sides of the coin. Uh, it does it does eliminate some job, but it create new job. For example, yes. uh, I have a I have a customer I have a customer who's doing facilities who's doing security management. All right, so they they uh, use uh, they wanted to do facility management. They want to expand into facility management. So they use their own building. They, they now we are implementing uh, aircon uh, monitoring system, uh, street light. Um, monitoring system in their compound and the lift monitoring system in their in their building. So they want to use this building as a living lab to invite their customers, their own customers to come and see so that they can implement IoT solution for their own customers building. So what they've done is they've created new job for their, their own people to go and deploy IoT solutions uh, 
to the to their various uh, customers. And then I also have a, a implementation on a anodizing uh, factory. Uh, the anodizing factory, a lot of things are manual. Uh, anodizing tanks, you know, you get all those precision engineering machines. You put them in. You create a layer on the on the on the you know on the precision engineered items. And their staff were very worried about you know uh, losing their job. But if they don't upgrade. The whole company will become, uh, you know, less productive, less productive, and then everybody will lose their job because it's becoming more and more competitive. So after they they uh, they do the POC, went into active tank, now they want to increase it to 50 tank. They are now training their staff to go into higher value added jobs within the organization to train them to become technicians. Then the technicians to go and help to push this new uh, system to their customers because they have the technical knowledge. And then to say now we have an automated uh, monitoring system where you as my customer, you also can monitor the various stages of your systems being anodized. And that increases uh, the, the uh, overall demand for their services. So, so okay, let's take about, let's talk about, about in Indonesia, let's talk about, you know, um, uh, oil and gas, you got a lot of oil and gas company. You cannot touch the the systems that are set put by you know Schneider, by Immersion and all that. They won't let you touch. But then a lot of them outsource certain maintenance services to uh, Indonesian companies. Uh, I know of companies who take about three months, uh, four months to go down on ground to go and see all the equipment that they are maintaining. Uh, and then they input all the data, take another two weeks to three weeks for them to come up with a predictive uh, maintenance kind of uh, information. Now, with our system, you're right. You totally don't need the manpower to go down to the various uh, plants. Uh, and you don't need to go and collect the information. All right. But what effectively happens is that now that they are able to provide that solution to more customers. And then their, their staff can focus on implementing IoT providing, uh, you know, predictive, preventive information, interacting with the custom, uh, customers on that and retaining the customers and also increasing the base of customers. Uh. So it's, it's also about fighting against competition and then to allow your company to progress from one step to another, thereby, thereby uh, making sure that you go one level higher and higher onto the, onto the uh, you know, uh, value chain in your organization as well. We can't st stand still. IoT is going to change the way we do things. Uh. So if we don't embrace it and uh, move up the value chain with it, you're right. You know there will be people whose jobs will be eliminated. Yeah. But then on the other flip side, it will create a lot more jobs. Uh. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. The next question. Uh, okay. Pa Asep bilang excellent answer. <laughs> okay. The next question from Robbie. How about dedicated protocol that create for specific device? Uh, can the contact handle it or Comprosis can yeah. handle it? Okay, contact has about 300 protocols. So basically it has covered quite a wide range. But if you have certain protocols that hasn't, uh, that is you know, very unique to some particular customer, please let us know. Because contact is very strong in their R&D. So they are able to work together with you to do the protocol conversion and make it as part of our library. Okay. As a library, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next uh, from Pak Muhammad Riza, how to manage content digital signage from a uh, with contact system? I think because the, you already uh, mentioned about the digital signage, Harry. Yeah, we, we, we have the software inside. Uh, the, the Android box, uh, the, the price I told you, the end user price that I told you, it comes with the content management software. Same thing in the digital signage solution. It has the bot uh, to to uh, the the bot at Android level, and at the same time, it has the software, the content management software, also built in inside. So no issues. You don't need to use third-party content management software. It all comes as a package. Yeah. Okay. It's already included, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. The next question is uh, from Pak Hardian Restu. In IoT Gateway Edge computer to send data from field instrument to control room or server, can we use what the 2G for 3G or 4G? I mean that. Any yes, devices that connects yeah. to the cloud, uh, we we 
uh, you you can any means to connect to your on premise server or to the cloud or you know any other uh, platforms yeah no no issues uh, what we want to do is make it easy for you so whether you are pushing through mqtt or whether you are pushing through https or you know um, modbus tcp ip uh, you can definitely use uh, uh, any means uh, that is available to push into the into the uh, internet or to the cloud yeah yeah okay, okay. The, the second question is in iot gateway edge computer uh, can give a feedback or trigger or command to the plc related to the remote io I love that question because sometimes when I present about contact, uh, people start to think that it does visualization. So thanks for answering that question. Yes, we don't only do visualization, we do uh, control and management. So we can trigger responses uh, uh, for you to do the control and management portion. So it could be through your control box, it could be through your PLC, it could be uh, you know directly to your uh, sensor which has a uh, you know. Uh, if it has a two-way uh, communication and two-way action reaction thing, we, we can do that. No problem. That is okay, what great. Strong, and that's what we are. We want to we want to emphasize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The next. Yeah. Semoga menjawab ya Pak Hardian Restu. Okay. The next uh, question from uh, Dr. Irwanto. Yeah. Irwanto ini I think from the university. Yeah. Uh, he asks about what the benefit of the IoT implementation for in business and education sector. Uh, Any in business and in education. Education, yeah. Uh, business, I think you know, uh, we are all here because we understand in industrial IoT, uh, it's about uh, you know um, digitizing uh, everything. It's about control management from a single platform. Uh, it's about making things uh, faster, easier and uh, increase productivity. So I won't go into that because this is what the forum is about. Let me just address on the education portion. Education portion, we are not uh, advocating that education use IoT, uh, you know, uh, as a form of a medium to, to, uh, to, to deliver the education um, materials. We are using IoT more as a teaching tool so that your students can go out into the working world and be uh, enabled with uh, the technology, the capability to take on jobs in the IoT field. Okay, so for example, in Singapore Polytechnic, okay, it's a very huge like. Okay, if I tell you how much they pay on uh, on the IoT solution, you can understand why now they are quite famous. Even uh, the overseas uh, un universities and uh, uh, polytechnics, those people come over to Singapore Poly. All right, so what the students do is we have created a lab uh, which is worth we, they spend close to about sing dollars uh, sing dollars two hundred and seventy thousand uh, dollars two hundred and seventy thousand dollars on the lab uh, and and what the students do is we gave them three uh, scenarios smart environment smart farm and smart building and then we built the system with the different sensors and all that so the students learn on that and then after that, they create their own uh, application, like they create smart uh, parking system, smart uh, stadium, and it is all on using our sensors to simulate the various uh, systems that are present in the smart uh, stadium or you know in the uh, or in the smart lamppost kind of thing. So they actually design the system. And they actually uh, use our visualization, our VTC, and some of them very gung ho. They want to write their own scripts, so they use uh, uh, their own programming to, to interject with it. So, uh, so theirs is de design, develop, and uh, implement. In ITE, in Institute of Higher Institute of Education, is one layer down, one layer down. They are at the technician level. So at their level. They look at predictive preventive maintenance systems. They look uh, at how to uh, manage the system, how to read information from the system and to react. So they learn about condition monitoring and how to react to, to that. At the university level, we didn't touch on the university side. The reason why we didn't touch the university side is because um, uh, some of the universities over here, they're among the top universities over here and sometimes they know a bit high on the, <laughs> you know, very high, they are a bit proud. Eh? Uh, they, they think that they should be looking at AI and data analytics. But guys, think about it. AI and data, data analytics is very crowded. Okay? It's very crowded. The real issue, the real in the job, 
The real issue is how can I convert all my existing systems? How can I easily bring that information up to the, to the uh, cloud area? How am I able to integrate and be of value to the, what the market needs? Uh? So that's why we didn't approach the universities. When we did approach them, you know, Singapore, uh, the universities, they were a bit too proud. But I think in, in Indonesia, because you have a lot of ground level issues, so I think at the university level, if you are able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, teach your kids from ground level up to the application level, and you're able to look at it as a total solution, then at the university level, you'll be able to supervise the, the next level, the diploma people who are actually on the ground doing the things, and then the technician level, which are, you know, at the IT level. So I hope I answered your question. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but that's interesting because in some cases we, uh, as an association, we also work together with the university. Ya. Jadi Bapak Ibu silakan kalau ada tempat uh, kampusnya mau bekerja sama dengan aplikasi, nanti kita bisa gandeng anggota kita yang memang punya concern untuk uh, developing skill terkait dengan IoT. Ya. Okay, the last question uh, from Pak Yosa Hasbiantoro, how to secure IoT from the hackers, yeah, cyber hackers? Okay, uh, that is a very good question. Uh, we have a number of solutions uh, in the uh, contact. Uh, one is we are able to provide uh, two-way authentication between our controller gateway and our sensor. So the uh, authentication device, the authentication software is very light, so we can embed into our uh, sensors. Let's say it's a third-party sensor, at least from our gateway to the server, there's also two-way authentication. So that's one layer. Another layer is that we are able to, uh, our sensors, we are able to look at the birth date of the sensor, the serial number, the MAC address. Uh, we are able to tell all of this. So if someone removes this sensor and puts another sensor over there, we can tell straight away. The third one, you got to talk to Pat, Pat Viranto, uh, because we are also an Alcatel Lucent distributor. Alcatel Lucent has very good solutions at the network layer, all right, uh, to provide a security solution for IoT devices, right to the recognition of the same like a uh, contact recognition of the the uh, devices, their uh, respective signatures, uh, as well as the uh, network layer security that is provided. So that's another chapter altogether. But we, uh, we, because we are both a distributor for contact and for Alcatel Lucent, we can put this whole thing together for you. Yep. Right? Okay. So, so if you have a project, we can work with you on the security layer. Apart from what I mentioned from contact on the network layer, we can work with you on Alcatel Lucent as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Harry. I think that's uh, all the question for you. Yeah. Jadi, Bapak Ibu sekalian, yeah. Jadi, itulah akhir dari. Uh, sesi Q&A kita pada sore kali ini ya uh, dan jangan lupa uh, Bapak Ibu yang tadi telah hadir bersama dengan kita sampai dengan sekarang nanti akan dikirimkan materi dan juga link untuk uh, video rekaman kegiatan kita uh, pada sore kali ini ya jadi Bapak Ibu bisa lihat di YouTube channelnya eventcerdas.com di sana akan kami posting juga kegiatan-kegiatan ataupun video yang terkait dengan kegiatan kita selama ini. Nah, Bapak Ibu sekalian, saya mengingatkan juga sekali lagi minggu depan tetap ya kita masih ada sesi selanjutnya. Minggu depan kita akan bahas implementasi ya implementasi IT IT in the real world terkait dengan teknologi artificial intelligence ya. Tanggal 23 kita akan bahas terkait dengan cloud computing dan terakhir terkait dengan big data. Jadi pastikan Bapak Ibu tetap mendaftar di Venture Dash memilih event-event lain yang Bapak Ibu bisa ikuti dan bermanfaat untuk Bapak Ibu sekalian ya rekan-rekan sekalian. Terima kasih. Jadi inilah akhir dari sesi terakhir sesi kita pada hari ini. Saya atas nama Asosiasi Pengusaha TIK Nasional Aptiknas mengucapkan terima kasih kepada Pak Aldi Kurniawan dari Wira Energi atas waktu dan kesempatannya bisa sharing bersama kita dan juga uh, untuk for uh, Mr. Harry Yohanan from the contact yeah, Asia Pacific. Uh, thank you for your time for being here for, to sharing about the knowledge and the information how to implement the IT, uh, the IoT. Yeah. And we hope that uh, we can uh, meet and see you together again in the next uh, event. Yeah. 
Baik, Bapak-Ibu sekalian, itulah akhir sesi kita pada sore kali ini. Kami mengucapkan terima kasih atas kesediaan Bapak-Ibu bisa hadir bersama dengan kita semua. ya. Sampai jumpa di event kita minggu depan. Tetap sehat, tetap semangat. Bapak-Ibu bisa mengikuti event yang lain juga di dalam portal event cerdas. Silakan mendaftar di event-event yang lain yang Bapak-Ibu ingin ikuti di sana. Terima kasih. Sampai jumpa ya, tetap sehat semua ya. Saya uh, pamit kita akan closing ya. Thank you ya. Terima kasih thank semua you. ya. Thank you, thank you Aldi. Ya, yeah, thank you Harry. Thank you. Ya, yeah, thank you semua.